Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shea, and I'm the president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 207 of The Funnel, Sales Rep Development Plans, The Roadmap to Success. Before we begin, I want to remind you, head on over to alignment-group.com backslash The Funnel and subscribe. And we'll send you the show notes weekly. Comes out every Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our agenda today, career opportunity, goals and desires, requirements, develop a plan, more than an annual meeting. All right, let's jump into career opportunity. So the first thing I have here on my list to talk about is they want an opportunity. Most people in a job, they want career growth, and it's no different for salespeople. Now, that career growth could be, could be anything. It could be management. It could be maybe a larger account responsibility, higher revenue responsibility, different role, different sales roles. Some of the companies out there start, you know, you start out out of, out of college and you sort of move up the sales food chain. And understanding that you're, as a manager, understanding that your employees want opportunities is extremely important, okay? Because that's why employees leave. They leave because they don't see an opportunity or a path. Happens all the time. It's the number one reason. And I think in today's world, a lot of the millennials feel like in order to move forward, they need to leverage what they're doing now into a new opportunity somewhere else. I don't know that that's necessarily true for a lot of places. I just don't think, especially sales managers, pay attention to that and focus on that. Top sales, deform- top sales performers, they want to develop. They have professional goals. They want to develop those skills, and they want that upward mobility. And you can attract really good salespeople if you show them a path to development, a path to growth. And that's what we're talking about here. So how do we do that? Well, first step is understand the goals and desires, right? We have to really understand them from an in-depth perspective. So I'm going to talk about things that I've already talked about in other podcasts, but I'll touch on them briefly so you get the point, okay? We use the assessment. We use a candidate assessment. We also use a sales rep assessment when assessing an organization. We do that. We go into a sales organization and we look at the entire sort of big picture right on down to the individual's. It, it's not to find the people to fire like some people think. It's really just to get an understanding of where you are as a company, as a manager, as a sales rep, how the sales reps see the managers, what kind of processes and programs you have in place, how do you support the sales function, the skills, strengths, and weaknesses of your existing sales force. It helps us formulate a plan to help you improve. So having that individual assessment, whether it was a candidate assessment that was converted to a sales assessment, Or you just have the candidate assessment and you forgot to do the the upgrade. That's okay. But understanding the strengths and weaknesses of your rep and what you're trying to do to develop their skill set so they could sell more is part of this process. Second is putting in a really good goal setting program. And I've talked about this in the past. How do you know where your people want to go when you don't know their goals? Okay. I get it. Beginning of the year, you sit down and you say, okay, here's your new quota. I need a plan on how you're going to get there. And they say, well, I'm going to sell more. Well, I need a little more in-depth information. So they say, okay, I'm going to sell this much a month. I need more. And we keep kind of going through that exercise, right? Well, how many calls? How many appointments? What do you have to do to get there? I get all that. So you start out with the goal and you work backwards to, in my world, literally everything you are going to do every day. We break it down to the daily activities. So we have a real clear understanding of that. But I also want to know what are your personal goals? What do you want to do with your, with your life? I might get too personal and get HR all over me, but you know what I mean? Where do you want to be? 
three, five years. Now you ask that question in the in the interview, they tell you they want to be a manager, they want to be your boss, because they're told to say that. And now that you have their goals for the year in terms of what they're going after, you have some personal goals that are important to them. And if they achieve their professional financial goals, they'll be able to do some of the things in the personal life that they want to do. But part of that goal setting should be, what do you want your career to look like? Where do you want to be a year, two, three, five years from now? What is it that you, what, what are your desires? So you want to make that professional connection, but you want to make that per- personal connection. You don't need to be their best friend. That's not what we're talking about here. But I'm interested in the people that wor- I work with. I'm truly interested in them as people. Interested in what they like or what they don't like, their families, et cetera, et cetera. I ask them about their kids, not because I want to, or because I'm supposed not because I'm supposed to. It's because I want to. I'm I'm interested. I want to make that personal connection. And I want to have that professional connection because I want to understand what they want to do. Where do you want to go? And through all of my meetings and discussions and conversations with them, and we'll get into what that looks like in, in developing a career path, I need to determine to, is it a fit? Is what they want to do something that I think they can do long term? Now, if somebody says, I want to be a VP of sales in their first, they're in their first year of sales. You're looking for leadership qualities and, 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 and those sorts of things. You're not looking for everything a VP of sales needs to have. It's a little short sighted to say it doesn't fit because it's their first year. But what I'm looking for is do they display some of the characteristics of someone who would fit in that role and do well in that job? And it's my job to have that conversation with them if it is a fit and maybe if it isn't. So I want to know those goals and desires, and I want to have a real understanding of that. And that's an exercise that's pretty in-depth and lengthy, and you should do it at least annually as you begin to set up the year. Just I'm talking about the goals part. And then throughout the years you have, and desires, and throughout the years you have conversations with them and get updated. So I've been through everything with reps that I was with a long time from the time they started out as a rep to when they moved into management. Some of them got married, some of them had kids, some of them bought houses, whatever it is in their lives that that they they take the trip they've always wanted to take, something something like that. They've lost loved ones, parents, et cetera, et cetera. That's the personal side of it. Okay, so what are the requirements? Right, so I want to be a manager. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, I think part of it is action. What actions are you going to, going to take to develop into that role? They have to take ownership of that. And you have to take ownership as their manager to help them get there. There are some actions you have to take. But action is important. So if you want to be a manager someday, you have to take that leadership role. Well, I'll give you an example. You may not like a policy or a program that's been put in place, but undermining your manager because you're not happy about something does not display the kind of qualities we're looking for in a sales manager. You walk in the office, you close the door, you sit down, you say your piece and you move on. And when you walk out of that office, it's behind you. It's not out in the bullpen or when you're having beers with your friends. So that's action right there, you know, through your actions. Another could be we're looking for a volunteer to take a leadership role in, in a specific project. And you reach out and say, I'd like to do that. That's action. You're living up to what you say you want to be. And for my part, as a manager, giving you the opportunity to participate in those things, giving you a voice if you want to come in and have that conversation and not dismissing it because you don't have decision-making capabilities. I'm going to say you have to meet the current accountability goals and the quota achievements. So... If you want to be a manager someday and your manager's constantly chasing you around to, to do the things you're supposed to do, the basic part of your job, that's not good. If you're significantly under quota, that's not good. <laughs> How can you expect to move forward when you're not achieving quota? Now, I'm not going to say we don't have bad months or bad quarters, or we just had a tough year and we came darn close. It's not going to ruin your career. But if you're consistent in your achievement and you have a couple blips on the screen, you're fine. In other words, you have to meet the requirements of the job. So whatever that is, even if it's busy work for some companies. 
CRM responsibility, showing up for meetings, paperwork that's done properly, being respectful of others, participating in meetings, all the things that you're expected to do, hitting all the KPIs, and above all, hitting quota as a rep, because that's really important. So there's some requirements that you have to have for the, for the folks. Action for them, action for you. Next thing you need to do is develop a plan. Well, how do I do that? Well, I think, and, and we're going to talk about this later, and as I, as I sort of go through this, I, pro- I probably could have switched the outline up a little bit in terms of meeting with them and, and beginning the, 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 the conversation about the plan. But you should put a plan in place. And you have to have long-range and short-range plans or goals. Something they can hit and achieve targeted things that are going to help them achieve their goals long-term with the company. As well as short-term. And those action items need to be put in place over a period of time. So if you have something that needs to be completed, a project. You know, for us, for things that I've done in the past, it's mentor programs. We've had what we call field supervisors reps that we've put in, in a place where they're responsible for one other rep in terms of day-to-day management and activity levels with with significant oversight from a manager to give them the experience of managing. And there's certain things they have to hit to do that. And there's plans in place to do that. So look, if, if this is what you want to do, you've been here for three years, and this is what you want to do, here's where we're going to go with this. This is the long-range plan. You want to be a manager someday. Okay, and you want to learn how to do that. Well, there's some training and, and support that we give managers here. You, you're more than welcome to participate in some of that. And we'll, we'll lay that out as part of the long-range plan. We'll lay out your, your goals in terms of numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a mentor program. We're going to put you into the mentor program so you can mentor young reps, and we'll teach you how to be a good mentor. The short range, well, you know, we got to hit our quota numbers, and we have to participate. But maybe there's a project that needs to be done in a quarter, in a qu- on a quarterly basis, things like that. So you put it in writing, you develop that plan and the steps that are necessary to succeed. Now, of course, we have a 20-minute podcast to go over all of this, so we're not going to have all the details. But the plan should be in writing. It should have action items and goals and steps to hit. Just like think of it like your sales process. Right? A sales process is milestone driven. You hit one gate, then you move to the next gate, then you move to the next, then you close the opportunity. It's the same here. It's milestone driven. Don't just say you have to demonstrate leadership qualities. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's clear that up. Let's let's define what that looks like. And let's put a long range program together that that shows us that. Things that you can do as a rep from me as the manager, so I can see you're developing. And here are a couple things we do short and we'll up we'll update the short term, short range plans as we move forward and we'll completely and clearly define what those steps are to be successful in that role or to move into that role. Okay. This is more than an annual meeting. I know folks love to have the annual meeting. They like to sit down and, and I've been there. Okay. The whole thing was my boss would take you out to lunch and you'd spend two hours just just going through this heavy conversation about what you want to do and where you want to go and all your dreams and desires and everything was great. It was a good lunch, really good stuff when it happened because it didn't always happen every year. That's not good. Two, nothing ever happened after the meeting. So we would have these meetings. I'd go into these lunch meetings, sit down and just lay it all out there. Then I started saying, well, what's the point? And when I didn't have them, I was happier. Because it was kind of depressing and disappointing that you'd have a meeting and nothing ever happened. So it needs to be more than that, more than the annual meeting, okay? Communication is critical here. Open door policy. So the annual meeting, first of all, if you're going to do that, commit to it. And never skip. Have an outline and an agenda on what you're going to cover. And it doesn't have to be a lunch or outside the office. It can be. But you sit down and you roll up your sleeves and you get down to to brass tacks and you work through the stuff. But it doesn't end there. You can have a short quarterly half an hour update 
where we are. Remember, we put the, the program in place and we put the long range and short range. And you explained all of this to me. Here are the action items I was to, to hit. Here are the action items you, you were to hit. Let's talk about where we are today. Okay. This is great. This is happening. And, and so you're, you're four times a year, you're having little me- mini meetings to discuss it. And oh, by the way, as a manager with the rep, they should be ongoing conversations in the car when you're doing ride alongs. Right, you're doing the coaching, you're, you're walking through the appointments, et cetera, et cetera. But who's to say you can't have this conversation just as an update? Hey, listen, how's the mentoring going? I know we meet quarterly or maybe you meet weekly on the mentoring and you're catching up on it. What do you think about it? Just instead of like the, the heavy conversation, it's the light conversation. What do you think about mentoring somebody? And it's harder than you thought, right? Because they're not, they're not exactly like you. They don't think like you. And part of the job of the manager is to keep everything in the construct of the box, right? That we have to follow the strategies and the programs of the company. But we also have to understand the people we're working with. We have to get inside of their head and, and really adjust and mold to how they view the world. Because if we try to get them to think like we think, we're going to struggle. So it's like putting yourself in their shoes while holding them accountable to the things you need to do. That's really hard to do. Right? And you get really good in those sort of open forums and maybe on the ride along, you're having lunch and you're talking about that. So tell me, how's it going? Any, you know, or are you struggling with anything? Yeah, it's a little bit tough. They don't think like I think that's okay. Progress is important that not everybody's the same as you. And then you can really just have some really good management conversations about some of the things that you've done as a manager that's been successful, imparting some of that wisdom on them. And it's a less formal situation. Those kinds of conversations in in that sort of open environment, they're money. They work. And it motivates people because, A, they know you care. It's not just like this. Like, to me, the annual meeting was like, well, he's got to do this. (laughs) He was told he has to. And sometimes we bug him about it. So he likes the, the lunch part of it, and he likes you as a person, but he dreads going through the process because he knows Nothing's going to happen after that. He's hoping that you forget about it and move on so he can forget about it and move on. That's terrible. Terrible. So what you need to do is enjoy it. Take it for what it is. And it'll motivate the living daylights out of your reps. And it'll increase loyalty. Loyalty doesn't happen because you follow a three-step process or a six-step process. It It happens because you actually care about them. And you're doing the things to help them get better at what they do. In other words, you're not selfish. You're opening up to helping others. That's what it's about in developing that plan. So hopefully this gave you some insight into career development. And I know I gave you the kind of the broad brushstrokes, but I definitely encourage you to start working on that with your team. And if you are consistent and you do what you're supposed to do there, you'll have a, a tremendous amount of success with it. Don't forget to subscribe to The Funnel, alignment-group.com backslash The Funnel. We're on Facebook. My Twitter is at Shay John R. and LinkedIn. And you know what? I need to start putting putting this in here because I totally forgot. I don't know how many. We, we started maybe 25, 30 episodes ago. We record these uh, podcast in video format. So I use, you know, a, a presentation type view with bullet points. It keeps me on track. It gives it a nice look instead of looking at my ugly mug talking at the camera. So if you want to see the video, just go to our YouTube channel. Uh, Alignment Group does have a YouTube channel. Or you can just come to the website, alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. And it's on the same page as the audio. The video is on the same page as the audio. So check that out. If you're a subscriber, you know, you click the link and it's right there on the same page. You can reach me at jshea at alignment-group.com. Of course, alignment-group.com is our website. Until next time, keep feeling the funnel.